simply a pleasure to see that there are people in our community that are willing to give community service and serve on board of trustees. Um, so at this time, we'll start off with question one. I think you will find that some of the questions are very similar to what you found on your application. Okay. Question number one, what do you see as the basic purpose of public schools? What is the role of a board of trustees in the fulfillment of that purpose? Um, I believe that the role of public schools is to prepare our students, our children for the uh, Mrs. Lindsay can't hear you, so maybe if you could move a little closer to your microphone and, and speak in your, uh, I see that you're a school teacher, use your school teacher voice. <laughs> yes. Can you hear me a little better now? Yes. Oh, yes. perfect. That's so much better. Okay. Um, I believe that the role of the public schools is to prepare our students for the future in the best way possible for them, whichever path that they choose. Um, in the elementary and middle school, it's getting all their basics in and making sure they have access to all the resources they need to fulfill those goals. I believe that the board's role in that is to make sure that they, uh, sorry, I'm skipping over here, that the board creates and adopts correct protocols and procedures to allow that to happen while working with the administrators and superintendents to make sure that it's a cohesive process. Okay, very good, thank you. Um, question number two, what impresses you most about the Sylvan School District? Well, we moved to be in the Sylvan School District um, for our children. They've always had the children's needs first and the teachers have always gone over and beyond with, with the students. Um, originally, we lived in a different district and we intentionally moved to get into Sylvan. Um, it's, they've just always been an amazing district and they're looked at highly throughout the county and the state for their excellence. Okay, thank you. And question number three, why do you want to be a board member and what would be your highest priority as a board member and why? Um, I've always wanted to help with the board and the school system. I mean, I decided to be a teacher when I was four years old. Um, I've always been driven to help children. And what was the second part of the question? I'm sorry. Um, what would be your highest priority as a board member and why? I think um, making sure communication is transparent for the parents and the teachers and the administrators. So they have clear lines of communication and they know how to get the answers they need. Okay. All right, um, that finishes my first three questions. So I'm gonna turn the time over to Mrs. Mia Kawa for questions four through six. Okay, just making sure you can hear me. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, you have a little bit of a lag. But okay. Okay, I'm not sure if it might be my headphones and I can disconnect those. Let me know if you can't, okay? okay. Um, have you attended Sylvan District board meetings in the past? And what Sylvan District committees have you served on? I have attended a few board meetings um, in person, and then I've only attended one through Zoom. Um, and I've, as a teacher in Sylvan, I've attended many functions and been in many committees. And as a parent, I've tried to do equal duty with my children's schools. Okay. What will be your main role and responsibilities as a board member? What is the role of the superintendent? And how do you see your role in the community as a board member? Okay, how do I see my role as a board member in the community? Yeah, hang on, let me, um, so George, will you, re read, you read it I'll and I'm gonna take off my. Yeah, I'll reread the question. What will be your main role and responsibility as a board member, number one? What is the role of the superintendent, number two? And what do you see your role 
in the community as a board member. So basically, you know, your, your role as a member, role of the superintendent, and as a community member as a board member. Okay, so um, I think my role, my main role as a board member and my main role and responsibility as a board member would be to gather information and create and continue to communicate with above and below um, to make sure that everything works for the children and the students to help them progress. Um, to create and adopt doctrine that helps the schools, the students, the staff. Um, I think the superintendent's job is to make sure that those rules and um, adoptions get followed and they administer them. And I think my role as a board member in the community is to make sure that the community feels welcome in the school district and that there is a cohesiveness where they work together. Okay, I took my headphones off. Is it a little better? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yes. Okay, my last question for you is what would you do if you believed that you did not have sufficient information from administration to make an informed decision? I am I think I would try and get more information and um, not make a decision until I have the necessary information at that point. I wouldn't rush to make a decision just to have a decision. Okay, thank you. All right, very good. At this time, we'll turn over questions seven, eight, and nine to Mrs. Lindsay. Okay, just one second. Let me get there. Easily scribbling on other pieces of paper. <laughs> okay, my question for you is, um, welcome, by the way. Thank you. Describe your response to a parent that approaches you in public or in a public place and ask for your support on a particular hot issue. Um, as a teacher, I've had those issues and, and you kind of learn to deflect and listen. And um, I don't believe in aligning with a single entity at, in a private sector moment. I think that the board members have to set a united front for those kind of hot topic issues. Um, and being able to separate personal and professional is very important when you hold any position where the public okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, my next question is, what would you do um, and if you were approached by a parent with a complaint about a teacher in, or teacher incident in, a, in our district? Um, I think I would try and lead that teacher or that parent the proper channels of how to document that and get it rectified. Again, without placing blame on anybody or taking sides at that place and time. Okay. Okay. My last question. Can we flip over here? Um, how does a school board ensure opportunities for parents and community members to express their dis diverse range of views to the school board? In, on important uh, policy issues. I think the open board meetings are a great way to do that. And they have seen on the website the different methodologies that you have to be heard. Um, and just oh, take a deep breath. <laughs> um, so making sure that, can you say that again? I'm sorry. Sure, it's a long one, okay. <laughs> How does a school board, how does a school board ensure opportunities for parents and community members to express their diverse range of views to the school board on important issues? So, um, like I said, the, the board meetings, they are the scheduled ones where you can show up and then the ways to do the 
the write-in questions now with our special COVID and um, the special meetings. And there's always ways to email the board members. And board. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Harvey has questions 10 and 11. Mrs. Harvey. You're currently muted, uh, Mrs. Harvey. Shame on me. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Welcome. Uh, it's very nice to have you here. Uh, please summarize the strengths you would bring as a board member to Sylvan School District. Um, I have owned a small business in the county and I've been a teacher and I'm a parent. Um, so I have a lot of different viewpoints and um, I think all of those would help make me a strong board member. Great, thank you. Um, can you identify a board decision that you felt strongly about and how you would have approached the voting on that issue? We could talk about the current things going on. Um, I'm very glad that the schools are opening as a parent um, for COVID and I think that was a very hard decision for the board members to make and I know there was plenty of passionate feelings both sides and um, I think that you handled it well. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Harvey. Uh, Mr. Collins uh, has questions 12 and 13. Thank you very much, Mr. Ra. Oh, Holly, nice to see you. Uh, yeah, before I ask question 12, I have just a brief follow-up question about question number eight, and I'll go ahead and read that question again. Uh, the, the question number eight was, what would you do if you were approached by a parent with a complaint about a teacher or incident in the district, and you talked about how you would direct, uh, you would want to direct that person to the proper channels. Uh, can you tell me, can you tell us just a little bit more about that, like how you'd handle that situation? Um, how I personally handled one like that? Uh, if, if you have an example that you can share, that would be fine. But if you want to just, uh, just describe in general how you would, that is also perfectly fine. Okay. Um, I think that I would tell the parent who had an issue with a teacher that they should first speak to the principal because um, that's the teacher's overseer, the, the first layer of um, supervisory role and have a three-way conference with the teacher, the principal, and the parent to see if that can be resolved. And then it can be escalated past that if it needs to be and it isn't resolved at that point. But to jump from the teacher to the school board is a huge leap. Um, if it's something illegal, perhaps get the police involved. Um, but first go to the, the principal and follow that channel first. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, so question 12 here. <clears throat> Holly, are you aware of the time commitment uh, of being a board member? And do you feel like you have time available to de dedicate to your responsibilities as a board member? I believe there's a lot of time involved. Um, I've also found that the busier a person is, the more scheduled they become. And being a mom of five very active children and a husband who is working several hour long jobs, um, I always find a way to make it work. And when it's important and a priority, you find a way to make it work. And I have plenty of support, support a family that can come in and help at any time if I need to go for an emergency meeting or child care or something of that nature. So yes, I would be able to make the time commitment. Thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt. We have 13 minutes left of the 30 minutes. Great, that thank you very fine. much. Thank okay, you. Fine. This is our, our final formal question for you. And as Holly, have you received any training uh, for your role as a board member uh, that might include the Brown Act? And uh, a second part to that question is, what would you do to educate yourself uh, to become a more effective board member? I'm constantly trying to improve myself. I'm, um, I have a master's degree in business, so I have a lot of that business background. Um, so I would read up on all the bylaws again and the Roberts rules and all of the important factors for the meetings and any other information that board members would want me to read. I would love to or educate myself with. I would love to do that. 
Great, thank you for that. So now with about 10 minutes left, and just because we have 10 minutes, it doesn't mean um, you know we have to fill it, but I'm gonna go through each board member in the same sequence um, and ask them if they have any uh, follow-up questions okay. and we'll and we'll limit it to one per board member. Uh, Mrs. Miyakawa, any further questions? Uh, you're muted, Mrs. Miyakawa. Would you mind just circling back to me, George? I'm going to just peruse this. Real sure. <laughs> um, the next person is Mrs. Lindsay. Do you have one follow-up question? I do. Okay. Um, yes, Mrs. Talcott. In your uh, application, you mentioned uh, that you were uh, serving on a Montessori school board uh, in the, and that was in the planning stages. Um, would you please explain your role in that, on that board and uh, maybe go a little more in depth in your comments in, uh, such as in the planning stages, uh, such as um, will it, this school be in Sylvan School District? Will it, um, what ages or grades with this uh, house? This, this school or, is going to be in Merced County, so not in Sylvan, and it's going to be a charter school. Charter school, that's what I was gonna ask the last part of my question. It's TK through third grade at this point, they may go to sixth grade, and I'm acting as a Montessori consultant as I have my Montessori certifications. So I'm just kind of educating them on what Montessori truly is. Um, and this is a woman who's been trying to start a Montessori school for about six years. So I'm just trying to help her with the Montessori education part of that. And is that part of your business also? No. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Harvey, are there any follow-up questions or a follow-up question? Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you so much. Um, love to hear your um, opinions and about public education in general and um, versus charter school, which I guess is public, but still. Well, my children have all gone to public school, so I have a strong commitment to public school. I do think that there are some children that are better served in, in specialty charter schools, but I think for the most part, public schools are very accommodating. They have a lot more resources to reach special needs, uh, gate, um, accelerated. So I think that public schools are a better fit for the majority. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Collins, did you have a follow-up question? No, I think I'm good. I, uh, I didn't realize we'd have this opportunity, so I just went ahead and asked my clarification earlier. I, that's fine, too. Uh, I'm in the, your Thank same you. ship. All right, uh, Ms. Miyakawa, any follow-up question or are you good? Uh, just maybe this one. Um, you know, this is one of the first elections that we've had where we've, um, we've done it by district. And um, so, that, so that, you know, had you been elected and, and in the future, um, should you choose to continue to serve, you would be um, elected by that group of people. How um, are you going to ensure that you understand the comprehensive needs of the district and not just those schools and neighborhoods in which um, you are elected? Stanislaus County or? So like you're in trustee area four. Right. Um, so it's just a portion of the district and it would be those people um, that would be responsible for um, okay. reeling you should you um, decide to continue to serve. Um, how would you make sure that you understand the needs of all the, the, the schools in our district and not just those that reside within trustee area four? I think by visiting the schools and by talking to families and administrators and teachers and all of the all of the areas, the trustee areas, I'm not sure if I'm naming it right, um, I would get a better understanding instead of a myopic one. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Talcott, uh, in your final minutes, is there any uh, a statement you would like to make or any final comments before we uh, end the interview? Um, I just want to thank you for your time and for considering me. Well, thank you for um, sharing um, and talking about um, your history and your application and answering our questions. 
At this time, we um, uh, will move on to the discussion portion of our board meeting. And this is um, for some people, uh, it may seem a little odd and strange. You know, a traditional way uh, would be that you interview a person and then um, the hiring committee goes into a private room and um, consults and then comes out with the decision. Um, in a public board, that's not the case. Uh, everything is done in public except for sensitive issues that um, board members learn about and why we go into a closed session. But this doesn't warrant a closed session unless we do it all in public. So at this time, we are gonna have a discussion and we're gonna go around to different board members. I'm gonna call out the sequence and we may end up doing this one or two or three or four rounds until all five board members are comfortable that we've discussed this enough and see if um, we can do a vote at that time. So we're gonna start with Mrs. Lindsay. Um, following Mrs. Lindsay, we're gonna to go to Mrs. Miyakawa, then Mrs. Harvey, then Mr. Collins, and then I will take the fifth position. And if we need to come back around, um, I'd like to, to do that. Um, and we can do it several times, but um, being that we're on Zoom and we can't talk over each other, which is a good thing, um, we're, we're gonna do a, a, you know, a, an orderly fashion. So, Mrs. Lindsay, the floor is yours. Um, okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I think I do. <laughs> Not sure going first is the one I wanted to do, but anyway, um, I, you know, um, I appreciate always any time that anybody steps forward to serve on uh, any of our boards, our committees, anything in the schools. So, um, Mrs. Talcott, I want to say to you, thank you very much for stepping forward. Um, I do feel um, that your answers were a little bit short and maybe not as in depth as I would have liked them to have been. Um, maybe your, your nerves were a little bit there, maybe. Yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, I'd kind of like to hear what other board members have to say before I come okay. to any kind of conclusion. Very good. Uh, remember, this is a discussion amongst five board members. Please do not address your questions to the, uh, the candidate. Uh, this is a discussion between five people. I know there are other people in, but the, the conversation needs to be in such a way that we're communicating and around each other. I apologize. Five people. So uh, any comments need to be directly towards other um, board members. So we're going to go on to uh, Mrs. Miyakawa at this time. Thank you. You know, here's the reality. It's been, I've been on this board for nine years now, which seems crazy. But um, when I first kind of took a look at these questions, um, I think my answers might have been even shorter. <laughs> Quite honestly, um, you know, not when you step forward as a community member, um, despite being super involved in the schools, which I was as well, um, and had served on site, um, on the site committees, um, you still just have no idea what what it entails to be a school board member unless you happen to be for some reason an, an avid I don't even know why you would even come to board meetings if you didn't have to so um, I don't take issue at all with with um, those answers because I honestly don't even know if I could have answered some of the questions getting in I think I think one of the things I learned at my training when I was a new board member was someone stepped up and said you don't even know how much you don't know when you Get on the school board and so um, all that can be learned thankfully um, you know and, and as long as the heart is there willing to learn and study and and ask questions and um, you know get in get, get into it then I have no reservation as far as that's concerned um, I think from what I've seen um, and and just full disclosure I know um, Holly from we had children at the same site and so we um, had some PTA events together and um, and so I, I saw how involved she was on in, in the schools and um, and with her own children and so I have no reservations. Okay, so before we're going to go on to Mrs. Harvey again, 
Um, I encourage us, we're going to have a discussion. If you want to talk with other board members, we're going to be able to do that. I'd probably encourage you not to disclose how you're going to vote and so forth. What we're trying to do is, is, is see the pros, the cons, and move through that process. And the, your declaration of how you're actually going to vote will be done um, during um, the roll call, um, should that happen. So, Ms. Harvey, um, go ahead. Um, I think Ms. Talcott, uh, Talcott, excuse me, Talcott brings a lot of um, strengths, obviously, to the position. I mean, obviously, uh, a parent is, uh, you know, having kids in the system, I think is so valuable, uh, understanding that perspective. I think also being able to understand the perspective of the teachers, um, very valuable. Um, I think the business experience, and I didn't get a chance to find out more about that. Um, so I would like if, um, if anyone can and knows a little bit more information about that, um, it'd be great. I didn't really get a chance to get, dig into that. Um, she sounds like she's demonstrated uh, leadership, strong leadership. I was really impressed with the way she responded to the, you know, being cornered in the supermarket question about, you know, let's go straight to the, the principal and, and find a solution to be, sounds like. Um, and also sounds like she's definitely a team player, uh, understands that, you know, this board is definitely a team and it's a diverse team and, um, you know, Sounds like she has experience working with very diverse groups, and and above all, uh, all her comments seem to be student focused. You know, everything came back to what's really best for the students, and and as a board member, that's really where why we're all here. And so I found those to be you know really, really great responses. Um, training, I agree. You know, you don't know what you don't know until you realize. Wow, I don't know that. And then and so I definitely would you know any kind of training for a new board member is fantastic. Um, so if we can find room in our budget for that. Um, I guess my one concern is um, the Montessori thing. Uh, we're a public school. We're dedicated to public school. I think there might be a conflict of interest there. Um, maybe not um, legally, but maybe uh, a perception of conflict of interest. Um, and that one's, that one's a little bit strong because I'm, I'm a really strong for public education. And so uh, the charter school system to have someone else on a board to representing both i'm not sure i feel really comfortable about that um, but i'd love to hear my board members about how they felt about that um, and um, you know if it, it might be a deal breaker for me uh, but then again maybe the candidate is willing to you know drop out drop out of that process um, i don't know again i don't know if we can ask her that or anything but for me that's a really strong one because i'm i'm all public education and to have someone on a board on public education and a charter school is really makes me very uncomfortable but everything else strong skill set be a really great asset to the team thank you thank you mr collins thank you um i uh, i appreciated uh holly's response to question number three uh, talking about uh, what our highest priority as a board member would be she talked about transparency and communication i feel those values both align very strongly with the values of the district um uh, which talked about uh attending past meetings we'd always love to have uh, uh, uh candidates or applicants who have attended uh, multiple meetings in the past uh, it's just a really good opportunity to see things but um that's um, that's okay. I mean, the Dodgers were in the World Series last night, so I mean, there's a perfectly good reason to uh, not. Um, yeah, if you were had one ear in that meeting and one ear in, in another one, um, I appreciate that she talks about uh, gathering information and uh, seeking that out that reflects uh, an attitude of a of a learner. Um, uh, question seven and eight that talked about uh, being uh, approached in a public place or um, by a parent about a, a complaint about a teacher. Uh, again, I appreciated that she would um, uh, direct that parent back to the proper uh, proper people because there are several layers uh, uh, prior to the school board, and that's uh, that's that's appropriate. Um, you know, and it also um, that shows or demonstrates a solution focused um, attitude, uh, which uh, which is uh, very critical. Uh, when asked about the parents that asked for support, she talked about deflecting and listening, uh, mentioned that she'd had some experience with that in the past and appearing as United Front as a board, that's also in our values, uh, in alignment with our values, I appreciated that. 
I appreciate that she brings uh, diverse perspectives, uh, that of a business owner, that of a teacher, and that of a parent. Um, uh, Ms. Miyakawa, you know, I have, have talked a couple times about how um, it would be great, uh, again, because our, our kids have, uh, you know, have uh, graduated out of the Sylvan uh, School District, and it would be great uh, not just to have, I mean, we've got kids in the school system still, so there is that parent perspective, but someone um, with kids in the actual district, uh, that, that provides a valuable perspective uh, on communication, how things are going. I uh, really appreciate that. Um, uh, beyond that, each and every single one of us knows that there is a steep learning curve to this role. Um, I don't think um, I fully caught on to things for two years, um, and all the acronyms still uh, I have to look up from time to time. So uh, there, there, there is a learning curve. Anyone, uh, any applicant would come uh, to uh, to this place with a great deal to learn, not only um, specifically about the district, but just in general of how, how boards operate. So um, that's, that's um, yeah, that's something that we, we should have expected from everyone. Um, unless they had prior school board experience. Uh, Ms. Harvey, uh, just regarding the, you, you expressed strong feelings about uh, serving on a public school board and on a, a Montessori board. Um, I, I, I don't have strong feelings about that. Uh, I'm not sure it would legally classify as a conflict of interest. I, I think it's possible for a, a person with a skill set that could bring something great to, to both. Um, so it wouldn't be a, a big deal to me, but I um, mean, you could certainly understand where, where that perspective uh, may, may come from. Um, and for now, I think those are my thoughts uh, on this interview experience. Very good, thank you, Mr. Collins. All right, I'll, um, first of all, um, uh, my heart goes out to Mrs. Talcott because uh, this is just weird, <laughs> you know? It is just a weird process that we're going through and to potentially be on the internet and pretty much anybody uh, in any of the 180 some countries in this world can actually watch this is even more strange and sci-fi-ish. But um, so I understand her nervousness. Um, I'm not particularly bothered by the short answers. As a board president, um, I love short answers by board members. Um, so, and when <laughs> you have an opportunity to serve as president, you too will uh, welcome short answers by board members. So <laughs> that doesn't scare me. Um, some positives that I saw was, um, she has an education background um that's very positive uh she's a lifelong learner she mentioned she got a master's degree i didn't know that um i can tell you um that that will take a lot of effort and energy so we have a person who is a worker and i too agreed um with her with her sentiments on being busy um she used different terminology than I've used. Uh, I've always believed in the phrase, if you want something done, give it to a busy person. Um, and that's just how the world works. Busy people get stuff done. So that didn't concern me too much. Um, I am concerned with the fact that if she does get appointed though, that would mean that there are four out of, four out of the five board members are, are credential <laughs> teachers. And, um, that will be an interesting dynamic that the Sylvan District has never had before. So I'm glad that's what you said and not something else. So just go ahead. What's that? Did I say I something? I, no, but no, yeah, you you, you proceed. I, I just I, I thought you were going somewhere else with that, and I thought, oh, good heavens. No, I I I was giving her a compliment that you know of uh, uh, being an educator. Um, I hear Mrs. Harvey on charter schools. Um, I look at charter schools different. I, I don't like the name charter schools. Charter schools are public schools. They're publicly funded, um, but they tend to have a focus towards them. I personally don't see she's, um, there's a conflict. Uh, one, 
uh, charter schools, I don't think is a conflict. Number two, she's doing it in Merced. Number three, um, I don't think it relates, but I do, I do like the idea. There are divergent opinions on this board regarding charter schools. I get that. And I respect that. And I like the fact that we do have divergent opinions. And I think I pretty much know where most board members are um, on that. But there are many years that I served on this board what we oversaw excuse me that we oversaw charter schools and um, so as a governing board member we may be called upon to be board members for charter schools um, in the future that may or may not happen so I don't I don't think that's a negative I think it's a positive and I, I mean it's I don't see her setting a booth out on Sylvan Avenue saying welcome charter schools come to me so uh, I just don't see that's her her formula I just think it's her knowledge base that she has and um, I was impressed by that um, so a lot of the things I heard I was very impressed with and um, we're gonna go for round two around. So Mrs. Lindsay, any further comments that you would like to make? Uh, yes. Um, I too, Christine, had um, a great, um, uh, that's why I uh, asked the questions concerning the Montessori school and uh, the, um, whether I didn't quite get finished, but she answered the question for me that it was a charter school. Um, in, in dealing with the charter schools, it was a a major headache, I can tell you that. Um, it was very difficult on the staff and it was very difficult on administration. And um, so I, I don't take that lightly, personally. Uh, I think that it is a, um, a very important issue. Um, not saying that, that because she's serving on a charter school board, but I do think it could be a conflict. Uh, I, I agree with you, Christine, on that. Um, I don't see uh, exactly how those mesh because um, they're totally, they may both be public, but they're not. One's considered private. I contacted the county school boards today, downtown, and the, uh, the California school boards, and charter schools are considered public, I mean private. They are a private school, and um, they may get public funding, but they are not required to report to the county office of ed in any way so um that that's a what would be one of my major concerns not necessarily now um, i'm not concerned about the school in merced by any means but i do think that um in in preparing for your future in sylvan school district you want people on there that are dedicated to public education and um while I appreciate everything that um, she brings to the the party, I also believe that could possibly be a conflict of interest and um, could could turn into an issue. So I just want to to say that my my other concern is um, in the application um, process. Um, one of the questions was, um, and I'm going to paraphrase it because I can't exactly remember the exact, but it was what is the most important uh, aspect of the school district? And um, um, her answer was um, teachers. And uh, while I, <laughs> having two teachers in my family, um, I agree teachers are absolutely imperative, but um, I do think that in Sylvan, that our, at least my focus has always been the children. And I believe that, that that's always been our motto, that the children become before everyone and um, so that would be my second concern and maybe I just kind of maybe it was misunderstood question I don't know but uh, anyway that would be my would be my concern okay uh, miss Mikhail anything further from you yeah just to maybe just jump on you know just a couple thoughts on what you've said um, to clarify with miss with mrs. Lindsay's last point if she's talking about question number two, where she said that one of the reasons she moved to their district was because teachers went above and beyond. Um, but she, before that, her very first answer was that they, they put the children's needs first. And so, um, you know, she does have a No, no, I was talking about the application, Jan. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. That's on the, okay. On the, I, I've heard, on, yeah. the on the application, question 10 says, what do you see as the strengths of the Sylvan Union School Districts? And Mrs. Talcott's response was, the teachers, they are the heart of the district. They are the ones the community interacts with on a daily basis. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Collins. Couldn't find it. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, um, just a couple things. You know, I don't, I'm not gonna, this isn't a discussion about charters, but um, you know, up until a couple years ago, we had a supervisory role over charters, over Aspire until they moved. So having someone who's familiar with charters would be advantageous to us should that ever happen again. I mean, we're very small geographically, so the likelihood of that happening isn't, isn't high. Um, we also, there's another perspective here though, that we lose, we lose kids to charters and to private schools, and, and we should know why. Um, you know, I, I don't wanna get into my philosophy of, of whatever, but to understand what people would look for outside of the public school system would be beneficial for us. And so um, I don't see that, you know, as being a, a weakness necessarily. So just those two things. Um, uh, the other thing is she mentioned she, you know, they have a small business. We are always looking for ways to build that connection between the businesses in our community. Um, currently working with, with, um, with the chamber right now to do a fun thing, but, um, you know, having someone who has their finger in the pulse of businesses, you know, George has been that for a while. Um, as well, but is now retired. So, you know, it, it would be helpful to kind of have someone with a business um, mindset as well. Um, you know, the only other thing, like David was mentioning, um, you know, it's, it's, it is really helpful to have someone who has kids in, in, the, in the district um, because you do, you know, you're much more in tune with what's going on. Um, the only, you know, the other side of that coin, unfortunately, is, is, is how you advocate, advocate for your kids it becomes a little stickier when you're wearing a board member hat as I found out my first year. So um, that's just something to keep in mind that that should you become she become a board member, um, her voice is no longer her own, um, that it becomes it can be perceived as the voice of the board. And so um, that's an important consideration um, when you have kids in the district that you're you're no longer um, Jennifer Miyakawa parent, you're Jennifer Miyakawa board member first. Um, and so it, it takes a lot more delicacy in how you handle concerns with your own children. So um, that's the only thing. I appreciate the comments by other board members um, and insights um, and have appreciated this process. It's been an instructive one. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Miyakawa. Ms. Harvey, any further comments? Uh, thank you. I really want to, I thank you. Uh, again, Ms. Pinocal, I agree with you. This has been very uh, informative. Um, at first, I was concerned about the charter school, but you guys have brought up some really salient points. And uh, and there's so many, and, and I still have, you know, a little, but I think, again, you guys brought up so many, and it's such a strong candidate. She's, again, she's a parent, she's a teacher, she has good leadership skills, she she knows how to work with a team. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it has the student-focused students and in that gosh, that's just, you know, that's a win. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Harvey. Uh, Mr. Collins, any further comments? No, I'm satisfied in all areas, thank you. All right, uh, I'm just gonna throw out a comment here. You know, this, this process, and I've already called it weird, and unusual, you know, um, Mrs. Talcott could have easily just walked down to the election office, put her name on a piece of paper, and none of this would have existed and she would be sworn in on December. Um, it has been an extraordinary process and that we're going through and uh, how much we know about her and um, not only in her application but in her interview process. Um, and I haven't really seen anything that um, deters me right now but um, I'm going to go through the board one more time and then see if we can get a motion and a second on this. All right so a final round if needed. Um, Mrs. Lindsay. Well Mrs. Lindsay only got one time anyway so it's all right. Yeah. Um, no, you, but this is your yeah. third time Mrs. Lindsay. Well I didn't say anything the first time I just passed it. Well, That's I can, okay I don't have anything I else. That, I just was going to say that um, you know what? I'm 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 
right in sync with you guys. I understand the feelings that you have about the, um, the charter aspect. I think I kind of keep going back to what Christine said in the very beginning, which is I'm not cons as concerned about a charter popping up in our district. We may have our own charter someday, who knows? But what, I'm, what I am a little concerned about is her serving on two boards, one which is a, a private um, board and one which is a school public school board and private school board and a public school board. That, that does kind of, um, I think, draw definite uh, eyebrow lifting from the community, if not from anyone else, um, how someone can serve on two boards like that. <laughs> so, um, you know, I may be the only one that feels that way, but that does concern me and maybe it isn't even an issue, you know, but um, that's just something that we need to put out there. Okay. Uh, Ms. Miyaka, anything further? None. Uh, Mrs. Harvey, anything further? Let's say we vote yes, and then there's a conflict of interest. Does that mean our yes doesn't count? Does that mean that we asked her to no. step down? No. So what would okay. happen is, is we are voting tonight. It has nothing to do with uh, where she works or what she does for a living or. Okay that she serves on and so forth. Okay. Uh, we are appointing, we are voting to appoint a person um, to a board position. And then okay. uh, if there's a, a three, a positive of three votes, uh, okay. person then, Mrs. Uh, Talcott will then be sworn in uh, at our December organizational meeting. Okay. If for some reason a board member felt that she had a conflict of interest, um, and she said, yes, I do, she can deal with it. If she says, no, I don't, and you think she does, then we can get a legal opinion on it, and then whatever okay. the result of the legal opinion is would, okay. what would have to be done. We're all faced with those. I, I know one just recently by Mrs. Miyakawa where um, right. she yeah. used herself from voting on all construction items associated with a certain architectural firm because her son had an internship with that particular firm. Right, yeah, yeah, okay. That kind of thing. Good, We're all, thank you. These board members are always gonna be faced with a life's experience that could enter conflicts or not. Mm. It's our duty to present those and deal with them at the time um, when it's appropriate. Oh, sure, yeah, no, I just, I like, you can't be a teacher in the board that you're, you can't be a teacher in the district you're also the board on. That's what kind of meant, so, Oh, Obviously, I see what you're saying. So in other words, so, what you're saying is if a teacher from the Sylvan School District applied and we did appoint them, yes, they would have to resign their position. Oh, but, okay. All right. That's, but that's but not, not her. We're she works in a different this, district. Okay. All right. And that's what I'm just looking for clarification. And uh, I think that my peers have made some really valid points and um, really strong valid points. So thank you very much. I appreciate the your input. Right. And uh, let me just add one more thing, Ms. Harvey, and not to complex, uh, make things complex, but you know, the, any board member on this board, if, if a lawyer had a finding against you and said, you know, you have a conflict, a board member even has the prerogative to resign from the board if they want, if they don't want to give up their other job. So um, there's lots of options, but tonight we're focusing on appointing a person. Um, I'll get to you in a moment, Mrs. Lindsay. Uh, Mr. Collins, you're next on the list. Nothing further. Mrs. Lindsay, any final comments? Um, I just would like to uh, reflect back what you just said. You said she is a board member in another district. What district would that be, Mr. Raw? I She's not. I never said that. Yes, she did. School teacher in the Stan Union School District. It has nothing to do with the teacher. It has to do with the boards, what the question was. Yeah, I'd, I was giving a hypothetical example, and I'm sorry if it was a terrible one. Okay, so is she on a Montessori board in Sylvan School District is what I, my question is. The answer is no. She made that clear that she is working with um, uh, technically um, a Montessori school that is being developed in Merced County. Has nothing to do with us. But the, and the board is in Merced. Said it's in Merced County. The board is in Merced County, not the school, the board. That's what she's saying. It's the same thing. 
No, we have a Montessori school in Modesto. It could be a board here in Modesto. She, it's not. She's not. It's, it's Merced County. Okay, that's, that's all I'm trying to get as a clarification. Okay. All right, uh, by a raise of hand, if there's any other board member before we, I call to see if there's a motion on the floor. I don't see any hands. Therefore, I am calling for a motion to see if a board member is willing to make a motion to appoint Holly Talcott to the Board of Trustees of the Sylvan Union School District, uh, where she would be sworn in in December and serve for a term of four years. So Mr. Ra, as the outgoing board member, it will be my pleasure to make that motion. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Collins. Uh, is there any board member that would like to second Mr. Collins' motion? I'm seeing a hand by Mrs. or Miss Harvey. So a second by Miss Harvey. Um, Velma, would you call the roll call of the board, please? Yes, I would love to. Board member Collins? Aye. Board member Harvey? Aye. Board member Lindsay? Aye. Board member Miyakawa? Aye. Board president Ra? Aye, that's a 5-0 vote. Um, congratulations, Holly Talcott. Uh, you have been appointed to the Board of Trustees of the Sylvan Union School District, uh, where your term will begin in December of 2020. And at that meeting, um, you will be officially sworn in along the side of Mrs. Miyakawa uh, at that board meeting. Um, I thank everyone um, for participating uh, in democracy tonight. Um, I think that um, everyone did exactly how it should be. And I think that if we recorded this message, we might even want to send it over to the Senate uh, in Washington, D.C. so that they can see how civilized a board can actually be. <laughs> Sorry. Ooh, that's cold. Sorry. I probably could have we say without saying that. Um, Congratulations, Holly, Holly. We're really happy. Welcome, welcome to the group. Congratulations. It's, it's, it's a, I now ask uh, Mr. Fredrickson if you could unmute for a moment. Um, I would like to uh, give a charge to you and um, to um, educate uh, Ms. Tal Mrs. Talcott as much as possible. A tradition in the Sylvan School District is they used to get a big binder. Maybe it's a digital binder now and some, uh, have her go through, meet staff, um, have her and lay out everything that she's going to need to learn over the coming uh, weeks and days. And um, if you get scared and run south, Mrs. Talcott, please call me. <laughs> so it only me hanging and dry. Because it, it could be daunting at times to just look at the policy binder is a scary thought. Um, but uh, Mr. Fredrickson, any comments um, before we close at this time? First of all, great job on the process. And I know that's a challenge. Uh, I've been through that process before and you guys did an excellent job. And uh, welcome Mrs. Talcott uh, to the board in December. And then our key person is right down here, Velma. So Velma will become your best friend and uh, she knows it all. So we, the, the two of us will work with you to, to uh, get you acclimated. And uh, yeah, again, welcome and look forward to working with you in December. All right, thank you very much um, everyone for participation tonight. This meeting is officially adjourned. Thank you.